it's me again, um, as it will always be, cauliflower. We're moving on to C, one of those vegetables that's really easy to get picky eaters and kids to like. It's really mild in flavor. It's really fun to dress up with spices and rubs and sauces because it can play on a lot of things really easily. Fresh cauliflower usually comes in a package like this. It's usually wrapped in plastic, so you can't like buy it in smaller sections. When I get fresh cauliflower, I usually buy it if I'm gonna be cooking for multiple people. If I was just going to be cooking cauliflower for myself, I would get frozen cauliflower. I know there's this huge stigma against frozen fruits and vegetables. You know, like it's not as good for you or it's just not as good. Frozen vegetables are a great option, especially if you are the kind of person who does grocery shopping like once a week and there's stuff you're worried about going bad or if you're like a single person and you know you're not gonna go through it as fast. If I know I'm gonna be cooking something like five days down the road, I'm gonna get the frozen option. I do it all the time and everything that we're doing in this video today to this fresh cauliflower, we can do with frozen cauliflower. It'll work just as well and it will taste just as good. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and just get started. We're working on two recipes today. I first am going to get my oven going, or I already have it started. So I've set it to 450. If you're cooking multiple things in the oven, start with the thing that's gonna take the longest. If you're doing like a roast beef and you're also doing like roast cauliflower, the cauliflower is only gonna take 20 minutes, the roast beef is gonna be a couple hours. Obviously, start there. Huh. When you're cutting off florets, you're gonna get some larger ones like this and we'll just like cut them up so that they're more like this size. So we'll, we'll something like this, we'll quarter up. We've got half of our cauliflower ready to go into the pot. We're gonna give it a little boil, but we're gonna wait till it comes to a boil first. So we just got our water going. This can just hang out here until we are ready for it. So we're gonna start on the dressing for our boiled cauliflower. We definitely need some olive oil. Okay, we just want an eighth of a cup. We also want some honey, and we're gonna do half of that eighth. So if you see here, I've got the eighth right here. I'm gonna fill the honey to half of that. And the reason I wanna do it in the same glass as I just did the oil in is the oil acts as a barrier. So the honey won't stick to the glass, it'll just all drain out. And then I just give that a quick rinse in some hot water and then we can just use it again for whatever else we're cooking. One of the things I like to do while I'm cooking is just to rinse off the dishes that I'm already using so I'm not piling more dishes in the sink that I'm just gonna have to like wash later. Like that's a pain in the ass and it friggin' sucks. So we've got honey in there. We're gonna put in half of a lemon juice. We're gonna throw in some mint. Um, if you are lucky enough to live near like a Thai or Vietnamese market, you can usually find mint for super cheap. I got this whole bag for $1.61 as opposed to getting a quarter of the amount at like Safeway or Jewel Osco for like $4. Another thing is you'll notice I have paper towels in here. So one of the things that makes like the leaves go bad really quickly is is moisture and so I keep paper towels in the bag to just help kind of prevent that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. We have ten leaves. I'm just gonna add in a little bit of oat milk. I'm gonna put in the same amount of oat milk as I did the honey, half of an eighth a cup. So two tablespoons, essentially. If you have this, 
that's totally fine. You can still make this sauce. If you have a blender, you can do it in there. If you don't have either, you can still make this. I will show you how to do that as soon as I'm done using this, what looks like a dildo, but is not, because this part would fuck you up. But this is an emulsifier. It's basically like a, it's a blendy wand. I'm gonna use it in here, but I'll show you what you can do if you don't have this. I've got another eight. I've got another two tablespoons. And I got another two tablespoons. And that's just something that happens sometimes. Totally fine. I'm going to blend this first and we'll see how minty it is and then maybe we'll add more mint, but we might not need to. So we're gonna give it a taste. Very olive oil tasting, that's very heavy. The sweetness is nice and bright. I think we have enough mint in here. We definitely didn't need to put in another lemon juice. And I'm just going to add in a bit of salt. And again, I recommend if you are a person who is new to cooking, start with a pinch, taste it, add a little bit more from there because salt preference levels between people vary a lot. And I want everyone who watches this channel and is who's going along through the episodes to learn how to measure salt to taste. And they get to know that they, what their preference level is. Mm, perfect thing to balance it out. And we're gonna keep steaming along. We have our water boiling. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to take our hand and we're going to cup it. We're going to fill that cup with salt, and then we're going to put all of this salt into this water. If you put it in at the beginning, the salt will raise the heating point of the water, and so it'll take longer to come to boil. And the reason we're putting so much salt in the water is it's going to season our cauliflower for us. And so it's gonna get like a nice, wonderful flavor. It's really gonna bring out the flavor of the cauliflower. A lot of that salt, it's not gonna stay on the cauliflower. It's gonna be dumped out when we, when we strain it. I do this with anything that I'm boiling. So if I'm also gonna be boiling like pasta, you wanna make it like super salty. The Italians say as salty as the Mediterranean. And it really is the way to get so much more flavor out of your food. So I dump that in there. I'm gonna put a pot on it. I'm setting a timer for five minutes. How long it takes to cook is gonna depend on what it is you're looking for. How do you like your vegetables? Do you like them super soft? You're gonna have them cook longer. Do you like them a little crunchy? You're gonna have them cook for a short amount of time. Do you want them in the middle? You're gonna, we're gonna start with five minutes. That's a really good place to start. We're just gonna prep the rest of our cauliflower. I try to get the florets as similar to a size as possible so that way they cook at the same rate when they're in the oven. And again, I'm using the back of my knife so that I'm not fucking up my blade, the technical term. And it's always important to kind of clean as you're going along just because you save yourself a lot of heartache and frustration. If I'm already in the kitchen, I might as well help my future self out. We're gonna need some more oil. My bottle broke, and uh, so I have to put it into one of these. I'm gonna do two tablespoons. Some salt. We're doing it higher up so that it evenly spreads. So our timer went off for our cauliflower. I'm just gonna check. I'm gonna find a smaller piece. Well, the fork is penetrating the meat. It's pretty tender. I would say this is a good stopping point for me, but it still has some resistance to it. And so if you want a softer vegetable, I would go for another three minutes. Um, but for me, I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna have my straight up here. 
And I'm just gonna let this sit here. I want it to cool down. I don't wanna mix it with that sauce while it's this hot. I actually want this to be much, much cooler. So we still have another cauliflower to prepare. We'll be working on that while we're waiting for this to kind of cool down. Back to this guy. Another thing I'm gonna be putting on the cauliflower is uh, smoked paprika. For a half of a cauliflower head, we're gonna do a tablespoon of smoked paprika. This is how I like to toss my cauliflower. I love using tongs. Um, they're my favorite tool because I don't have to get my hands all greasy. But you can do the same thing with like a spoon and a fork or a spoon and a spoon. You just want to make sure it's evenly coated all around the cauliflower. Wonderful. Out and ready, we have a sheet tray. And since the cauliflower is already covered in oil, we don't have to worry about greasing the pan. Things with grease like oil and butter have smoking points. If you've ever like cooked a steak in a pan and you grease the pan and then put the steak in, you'll notice that you start to get smoke around where the steak isn't touching, so like the ring of the pan. And that can still happen in the oven when you're cooking at higher temperatures. And so if you oil your meat and your vegetables directly, you kind of don't have to worry about that smoking off. And you don't have to worry about like residue building up like in the corners of your pans if you're not greasing the pan directly rack in the middle exactly where we want it that's going in say goodbye and then we're going to set our timer and we're setting our timer for 30 minutes bam now we have our cauliflower it's perfectly seasoned you could eat the cauliflower just like this with the amount of salt we put in there it's so good already but we made a sauce. I just don't want the cauliflower to be just as hot as it is because I want the whole dish to be like really bright kind of flavor and temperature can affect that. So I'm just gonna put a little cold water onto the cauliflower. Wonderful. I'm gonna put in our cauliflower. We're going to drizzle on our dressing. And we're just gonna toss it. Now we have it tossed in our mint mixture. Mm. And it's still like a warm dish, but it's not like burning hot. I didn't want the heat of the cauliflower to cook the mint. When you heat it, it changes the flavor a little bit and I wanted it to remain really bright and fresh tasting. And then you have this wonderful sweetness. You get that mint and then the honey comes through and it's just like, it's a medley, like a little symphony of flavor. We didn't add too much salt to the dressing because we had salt in the cauliflower. That salt's coming through and it's very balanced. We're 14 minutes out until our cauliflower is done roasting. So if you didn't have a blender to make that emulsion, we're gonna get rid of these ends right here. And what you do is keeping your fingers curled, we're just going to finely cut the mint and then we're gonna go back and forth on it like this. And then that's what you're gonna want it to look like. Next thing, I have half a stick of butter. Another thing I'm gonna be adding is a quarter teaspoon of white pepper, but you can also use black pepper if you want. I just prefer white. And then we're gonna be adding garlic. And I'm gonna be using three large cloves. We're gonna be doing kind of the same thing we did with the mint. go in there as well. Now this is ready to go over to the stove. I'm turning the burner on and I'm going to be turning it right in between medium and low. 
because I want the butter to melt and I want the garlic to get soft, but I don't want it to like fully cook through. And we're not gonna walk away. If you have something as delicate as garlic cooking on your stove, just make sure to stick around. It's a, it's a thing that can easily be burned and the flavor just ruined. So while that's happening, we're gonna measure out some milk because we want to make like a creamy sauce. I'm gonna start with a half of a cup. So we have it on medium, it's really going now. And this is just, the only reason I have it on medium is so that I can soften up the garlic. But now that we're gonna start adding in other ingredients, I wanna turn it back down and I'm gonna turn it all the way to low. So we're just gonna be taking one full spoonful and we're gonna be sprinkling it into our pan. Move it around. You can really smell the garlic. One more, like a half of a, this, this spoon. So this is where you want to get it at. It's bubbling a little bit, but there is a bit of a thickness to it. We're going to start adding in our liquid and I'm just going to add in a portion at a time. So I added in about two tablespoons worth. It's going to look weird at first and it's going to look all separated. And that's just because we have a cold liquid going into a really hot pan. We're just waiting for the liquid to heat up to the same temperature as the fat. And now we've got this going, we're gonna grab ourselves a whisk. Okay, and then we're gonna be adding in some more. So we're adding in like a third at a time, essentially. Okay, and then we're adding in the remaining liquid. And so this is kind of like the level of thickness that I like it at. I like a little substance. And this guy came on again. So I'm not gonna be doing any more recipes where I have to have the oven up to 450. So we have a minute left. An important thing to know is if you're making something that has a roux base, which is this butter and flour mixture that we started out with before we added our liquid. If it gets too hot, um, it can break, which is where the fat starts to separate and creates pools and it separates away from the flour base. And so that's one of the reasons I want to do this on low. And I'm just kind of keeping an eye on it because I still have it on heat. But we only have 19 seconds left, so we might be in the clear. I'm turning the oven off, and I'm turning the pan off. So here is our cauliflower. You've got these wonderful, like, little crispy, dark edges. When you poke into it, it's still, like, it's nice and soft. I love this, like, dark crispiness that you get. You get a little bit of burnt edges. There's a lot of flavor in there. And we're just gonna plate this up and then get our garlic sauce on it. You can sprinkle a little more paprika on top for some garnish. Add a little extra mint to this guy. So we have two totally different dishes. One is very savory and rich and potent, and the other one is very bright and fresh and delicious. I'm very excited to eat these. Mm. That's wonderful, buttery, garlicky. Mmm. The crispy edges are mm. 
I like them both, but this guy's a winner. Okay. Thank you for getting through this episode with me. This one was difficult. That guy. Anyway. Oh. All right. <laughs>